Hello everyone, welcome to a new video in our Theories of Personality Lecture. Today, pag-uusapan natin yung Psychology of the Individuals by Gordon Alford. Okay, let's begin with the overview. So what makes Alford's theory different compared to other theories is that siya yung nagbigay ng emphasis sa uniqueness. Well, there are also other theories na nag-argue na dapat mas bigyan ng pansin yung uniqueness over similarity. Pero yung pinaka nag-argue ng uniqueness among all of them is si Gordon Allport. Okay? He's the one who, sta who stood firm sa kanyang stand okay, that it is best to look at the individual as a unique person rather than simply looking at how we compare with other people. At yung pananaw niya na yan, nagre-reflect, doon sa kanyang method of studying people. Okay, ang tawag nito sa method niya is morphogenic. Okay? Na hindi katulad ng mga tinatawag na mga nomothetic methods. Morphogenic is closer to ideographic rather than nomothetic. Pag sinabi kasi na nating nomothetic, we look into how one person compares to other people. Pero sa morphogenic method, sa ideographic approach, yung tinitingnan is how in what way are you unique compared to uh, in what way are you unique no what makes you different what makes you um what are the characteristics that are peculiar sa you okay not focusing on how you compare to others but focusing on what makes you unique okay and um finally Allport had what we call an eclectic approach. He accepted what other theories are saying. May mga konsepto rin siya na borrowed from other theories. Pero naniniwala siya na may mga existing theories, okay, like mga psychodynamic theories, learning theories, na hindi sapat okay, to explain personality. Para nakukulangan siya with kung ano sinasabi ni Freud, ni Skinner, at ng iba pang mga theories out there. Nakukulangan siya. And he believes that a broader theory, mas malawak na theory, ay ma mas maganda over narrow and specific theories in order for it to adequately explain personality. Okay? Speaking of personality, how does Allport define, how did he define personality? Sabi niya originally, personality is the dynamic organization within the individual of those psychophysical systems that determine his unique adjustments to his environment. But in 1961, he revised that into that determine his characteristic behavior and thought. Pinalitan niya yung that determine his unique adjustments to his environment. Okay? And maraming scholar, maraming scientists na ito yung ginagamit na definition ng personality. Okay? It's not simply a mask that we wear. Okay, it's not as simple as that, no? Malalim ang personality. And according to Allport, no? Tingnan natin yung mga keywords ng definition niya. Yung first is dynamic organization. Meaning, uh, when we say dynamic, personality, no? Like, look at yourself right now. You are, con you are continuously growing. Personality is subject to change. Personality is not something fixed. It's not something permanent. It's not something na hindi na mababago. Rather, according to Allport, it is something that grows. Like, think of yourself right now. In what way have you grown since nung bata ka pa hanggang ngayon? No? Definitely, you're a very different person now. Okay? And when we say organization, this is to acknowledge that personality has various aspects. Okay? Maraming aspeto ang pagkatao. Okay, and when we say personality, we integrate these aspects into a one coherent whole. Okay, next is psychophysical. When what Allport meant by psychophysical is that he acknowledges that personality has a psychological and a biological, a physical aspect. It's not purely psychological. Meron din tayo. Uh, meron din itong physical aspect. Okay, next. Um, like what I said earlier, he gave emphasis to uniqueness, kaya ang makikita natin, that determine his unique adjustments to his environment. Pero pinalitan niya yan, okay, because parang yung pinaparating nito is that we simply react to the environment, parang may pagka-behaviorism, no? we react to the environment. 
Pero hindi ganun kasi yung pananaw ni Allport eh. Kaya change niyan into that determine his characteristic behavior and thought. Determine means personality can motivate you to do something. Okay? It is something that um, nag-give way siya for action. Kaya ka ganyan, kaya mo ginawa yan, that's because of your personality. For example, bakit nag-aaral ka ng mabuti? That's because you are masipag. You are an achiever. You are a perfectionist, for example. You want to learn. Diba? Personality motivates you. Okay? Characteristic or character refers to uniqueness, no? individuality, peculiarity, rather than something na common. No? So like what I said earlier, no? uniqueness. And when we say behavior and thought behavior, ginagawa, thought, um, iniisip. So your personality okay, plays a role in determining what you do and what you think. Ayan. Now, according to Allport, what makes a person psychologically healthy? No, sabi niya, ito daw yung mga karakteristik ng psychologically healthy individuals. Una, extension of the sense of self. A healthy person doesn't only think about himself. A healthy person extends himself to other people. Just like what Adler said, social interest. Okay? na bring up din yan sa discussion ni Fais and Fais ng theory ni Allport with number one. Social interest. May pakika sa iba. You you are involved no sa meron kang um, you care about other people. It's also one of the criteria one of the criteria ni Maslow for self-actualizing people, remember? Yung social interest. Pangalawa, in relation to number one, warm relating to self of self to others. Healthy people, according to Allport, love non-possessively. Okay, hindi yung possessive. And other than that, healthy people treat others with respect. Okay, not belittling others, not humiliating others. Okay, not insecure sa ibang tao. Okay, and a healthy person believes that the desires of others are not foreign to our own. Kung ano yung mga desire nila, okay, may kinalaman sa atin yun. At alam natin na hindi yun completely alien to us. For example, no, what your mother, what your father wants for you is not completely walang kinalaman sa you. In a way, it's related to you. The suffering of other people, in a way, is something na it affects you. no Maybe not directly, but a healthy person acknowledges okay that other people's feelings, desires, thoughts are not foreign or alien to us. Ayan. Or to them, I should say. Pangatlo, emotional security. Rather than being insecure, okay, healthy people feel emotionally secure. And self-acceptance. They know their limitations. And they do not blame their um, failures to external causes or to other people. They know their weaknesses. They acknowledge their weaknesses. Okay, that is something that you have to learn as you grow, as you mature, to acknowledge your own weaknesses and not to feel bad for having weaknesses. It's not about um pointing fingers na I'm like this because of this and that. No, A healthy person acknowledges his or her weaknesses. Meron siyang self-acceptance. And other than that, sinabi rin ni Allport that healthy people do not dwell okay, on minor irritations. Rather, they are people who know how to accept what happened. No? Meron silang self-acceptance. Number four, realistic perception of the environment rather than um, unrealistic, rather than fantasy. You do not bend reality to fit what is your ideal reality. Okay, You acknowledge what is really happening rather than um, hiding behind a false reality. Number five, insight and humor. Okay? Ilalam mo yung sarili mo. Okay? And your sense of humor is non-hostile. Okay? When you, for example, when you make a joke, when you want to make other people laugh, it's not hostile. It's not meant to damage another person. And finally, similar to what Eric Fromm said in his theory, a healthy person has a unifying philosophy in life. Sabi ni Allport, in other words, a healthy person should know his or her purpose. Parang sinasabi ng humanism, na existentialism, and also in some way, we can relate this to what Adler is saying, di ba yung mga motivated by success, meron silang final goal. Well, yung mga motivated by superiority, 
dim yung kanilang, dim lilit yung kanilang um, final goal. Hindi nila alam. Napaka-vague ng goal nila. Okay. Now, let's talk about other um, concepts in Allport's theory. So according to him, here's the structure of our personality. Okay? Meron daw mga common traits and merong mga personal dispositions or traits. And knowing Allport, no, from what we have been saying since kanina pa, no, he puts more emphasis on uniqueness rather than similarity. So sabi niya, personal traits, those that make you unique, are more important than those traits that... Um, than those traits that are common. Examples of common traits are, if you're familiar with Ocean from Big Five, yun, mga common traits daw yun. For all port, hindi daw yun sapat to understand people. Instead of simply comparing you to the population in terms of gano'ng kaka-extrovert, okay, dapat tingnan natin on what makes you unique. Because two people may be extrovert, but in a different way. Diba? Pareho kayong neurotic, but in a different way. So we should look into the personal traits. What are the unique characteristics? What are the peculiar characteristics that are not captured by the big five, by the 16 factors ni Cattell, by other trait theories? So naniniwala si Allport that traits is not something na pwede mong bilangin, like what the big five and um, Cattell is saying with 16 PF, not like what Isaac is saying na tatlo lang yung trait. For all port, napakaraming traits. Okay? Now, in speaking of personal disposition or traits, according to all port, there are three types. Cardinal, central, and secondary. Pag sinabi natin cardinal, this is your eminent characteristic or this is your ruling passion. Not all people has a cardinal disposition. But uh, when we say cardinal disposition, this is something na Marinig pa lang yung pangalan ng taong yun. Alam natin na yun yung karakteristik niya. For example, Einstein is a genius. Okay? Mother Teresa is good. Hitler is evil. At marami pang iba. Okay? Usually examples dyan, like sa book ni Feist and Feist, mga sa literature, that when you hear this name, you already know the characteristic. Again, not all people has a cardinal disposition. Okay, pero tayong lahat merong central disposition. These are 5 to 10 outstanding characteristics. And I guess these are the characteristics that you put on your resume. These are the characteristics you use to describe yourself during introduce yourself na mga activities. And also, according to Allport, these are the traits that your friends and acquaintances use. Are, these are the adjectives diba, that they use to describe you. Like you are kind, you are caring, you are considerate. Okay? Yun yung mga central dispositions. 5 to 10. Okay? While yung cardinal, isa. Isang outstanding na hindi lahat ng tao meron ng ganong klaseng disposition. And finally, when we say secondary disposition, mas marami ito than central. These are not really that important in defining us, pero they occur, they, they occur with some regularity or consistency. For example, example dyan sa isang textbook na nabasa ko, favorite flavor of pizza of juice, for example, favorite genre of movie. It is not something that is, you know, big deal to define you, pero it is something that is observed sa you. Okay? They may not be that important, but they also play a role in making you unique. Okay? Other than that, all port talk about motivational and stylistic disposition. Okay? Meron daw tayo mga traits that initiate action. Okay, for example, being an achiever, being consensuous makes you study. So because of that characteristic, nagmo-motivate siya ng action. On the other hand, traits are not only motivational, they can also be stylistic. They can guide action. They may not initiate action, but they can guide how we do things. For example, of stylistic disposition can be orderliness and neatness. So, yung nag-initiate sa'yo na gumawa ng assignment, yung motivational disposition. Pero yung nag-guide nag sa'yo that kailangan maayos yung pagkasulat mo nung, mga, nung sagot mo sa assignment, that's your neatness, that's your, that's your orderliness, your stylistic disposition. So, hindi lahat ng trait motivational, yung iba, stylistic. And this was compared to Maslow's 
coping and expressive behavior. Whereas yung coping, yung motivational disposition, yung expressive similar to stylistic disposition. Okay? And finally, no, pero napakahalaga nito, for all port, meron tayong tinatawag na proprium. This is anything that you consider as warm, central, and important in your life. Anything na mahalaga para sa'yo. Anything that defines you. If Freud and other psychodynamic theories talk about the ego, all port talk about the proprium. Ano yung mga bagay na mahalaga sa'yo? Anything that defines you, anything that's important to you, that is in the proprium. And anything that is not that important in defining you is outside the proprium na tinatawag na periphery. Yun yung labas ng proprium. Okay? Now, according to Allport, no, this is related to some points I already raised a while ago, no, pero i-reiterate natin. Yung weakness ng other theories is that kung ang usapan natin motivation, they emphasize that we simply react to the environment. Well, for Allport, that is not the case. For him, hindi tayo reactive. We are proactive. In other words, ibig sabihin nito, we do not simply act kapag may nagbago sa environment, but rather what Allport is saying is that we are motivated okay, to reduce tension but create new ones as well. For example, you're motivated to do your assignment. Then after that, kapag natapos may assignment mo, maboboard ka kung wala kang gagawin. You will work on something else. Like for example, ako, um, in some days, I'm motivated to prepare my lesson. Kapag tapos na, I work on my YouTube videos. Kapag tapos na, I work on my hobbies. I work on my self-improvement and so on. Okay? So unlike what Freud and other psychodynamic theories are saying, we are not simply here to seek pleasure and reduce pain, okay? But according to Allport, we acquire new systems of motivation that are independent from the original motives. Life is not all about sex and aggression. As we grow older, napakarami nating mga motivation. Like to achieve, to make friends, okay? At marami pang iba. Okay, to be powerful people, to be successful, okay? to have healthy relationships. It's not all about sex and aggression. So according to Allport, ito yung mga katangian ng magandang theory. Una, dapat hindi siya na nakastuck sa past. Dapat here and now, the contemporaneity of motives. When we talk about motivation, let's not talk about the past. Instead, let's talk about the present. Okay? For example, why are you studying well? It's not because of unresolved childhood issues, but it's because of ano yung meron sa here and now? Ano yung goals mo? Okay? Pangalawa, pluralistic theory. Life is like what I said, no? it's not about sex and aggression, superiority, success. Maraming motives. And limiting motivation to two drives like sex and aggression is not enough to understand personality. Like marami tayong ginagawa sa buhay na walang kinalaman sa sex and aggression. Pangatlo, okay? It will ascribe dynamic force to cognitive processes like planning and intention. O bakit, bakit nag-aaral ka ng mabuti? Well, it's not, once again, it's not because of sex and aggression, but, but because meron kang plano, meron kang intention. You are also future-oriented. Like kaya ka nag-aaral mabuti because you want to graduate. Not simply because you wanted to reduce tension or you're not simply because sublimating your drives. No? And number four, okay, a good theory will allow for concrete uniqueness of motives. Dapat daw specific yung explanation ng mga motibo. Hindi yung napaka-abstract like sex and aggression or superiority success. For example dito, kunyari, you are learning how to ride a bike or you're learning bowling. You're doing that not simply because of aggression, not simply because of um, sublimating your drives, but because you really wanted to learn a bike. Maybe that's something na con that is something na concrete for you. That is something na hindi abstract katulad ng sex and aggression. Okay? So with that being said, all part believe in what we call functional autonomy. Naniniwala siya na meron tayong mga ginagawa that are independent of the original motive. Meron ka mga ginagawa ngayon, 
Okay, na pwedeng ginawa mo rin before, pero your reason for doing it now is not the same with the original reason. At may dalawang klase yan, appropriate and perseverative. But before that, example, kung mahilig ka magayos ng gamit, according to Allport, it's not because of anal fixation like what Freud said. But according to Allport, let's focus on the here and now, maybe may rason kung ba't mo ginagawa yan ngayon. Maybe it's just that malinis kang tao. It's not because of anal fixation. Two types of functionally autonomous behavior. Una, appropriate. There are things that we continuously do because they are important to us, because they define us. Okay, for example, for a religious person that can be praying, for an athlete that can be um, jogging every day, okay, for an achiever that can be studying or improving oneself. So may mga ginagawa tayo pa patuloy until the present because it is if these activities are important to us. They define us. Okay, for example, ako, no, until the present, nagtuturo ako, my original reason for, you know, um, teaching may not be the same with the reason why I continue to teach until today. But one thing's for sure, I do this because it's important to me. Appropriate functional autonomy. Pag sinabi naman natin perseverative, there are things that we do but we don't consider them as very important in defining us. So they are not in the proprium. Nasa labas sila. Nasa periphery sila. And we call them perseverative functional autonomy. For example, brushing your teeth, okay, is something that you do every day. Okay? But I don't think that is something that defines you. I don't think that is something that you put on your resume. I don't think that is something that you, you know, mention when you introduce yourself. Diba? That is not something that is really central. But still, you continually do it. Okay? There are things that are not that important in defining us, but we continually do them. That's perseverative functional autonomy. So to know if what you're doing is appropriate or perseverative, you have to ask yourself, is this important to me? Or is this something na ginagawa ko lang but not that important to me? Okay? That's it, everyone, for our short discussion about all parts psychology of the individual. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Thank you very much for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.